All right, hey guys, so uh, I understand uh, one of the harder things about learning pickleball is is this soft game. What are we doing with the dink? Uh, how do we create that consistently? Now, when you're when you're learning, especially in those first you know few months, few weeks, whatever that is, what we tend to kind of get in the habit of, and some people teach us this, you're like, oh, I got to bounce, I got to hit, I got to bounce, I got to hit. You're moving around like a crazy person. So um, it's really, really hard to, to, to control the ball. Okay, so one thing to remember, all right, so a pickleball, okay, it's plastic. It's got holes in it. It's crazy, super soft. It's crazy, super sensitive. So um, the ball feels what we feel. So dinking, okay, so dinking is one of the most important shots in pickleball because we utilize it to soften the ball, but it's a, it, what it's really about, and the sooner you learn this, the better. What a dink is really about is creating the opportunity, okay? So when we're hitting a dink, okay, I'm hitting a low ball, essentially below the net, where I'm lifting my shot, okay? Um, now, one thing I got to stress, a lot of times, yes, we call this the kitchen. I really don't like that term. And the only reason I don't like the term is because when you're learning pickleball, we're taught to fear the kitchen. This is not an area to be afraid of, okay? It's the non-volley zone because I cannot volley while my body is in this zone, okay? But I can, if the ball bounces, it is okay to move into this position. So these are all fine things. So when you're really thinking about this, it's okay to be here. It's, it's not a big deal. What it's more about is how do you learn to stay out and stay balanced, okay? So... When you are kind of learning, what happens a lot is we end up with our paddles down here and we, we tend to like drop back and, and try to get the ball and lift it, okay? So two things to think about. is A dink is actually not defined by a ball that has to stay in the non-volley zone. Uh, a lot of players, when you watch higher level pickleball, um, we are dinking back here, okay? Essentially, remember the term a dink is really about setting up the opportunity. So if I'm hitting a low ball, nice and slow, what I'm really doing is I'm lifting my shot so that my paddle can finish above the net. Now, if my opponent gives me a high ball, now I can turn my paddle and attack the next ball. So if I can hit that ball above the net, I can now attack that shot. Nothing wrong with that. Now, if you're kind of moving and shuffling around like this and letting everything bounce, it will be unbelievably difficult to create that opportunity, okay? So uh, first thing I kind of want to stress on, let's, let's talk about your body and your paddle, essentially, okay? So uh, what I like to think about in my position, okay, is if I stood at the center of a clock, okay, 12 o'clock is where the ball's at. So what I'm doing is I'm lining up my whole body, my toes, my knees, my hips, and my paddle at 12 o'clock. So see how far my paddle is out here. So I know this is comfortable. A lot of you out there, you're holding your paddles like this. This may be comfortable, but it's not a good position to be in. We actually want our paddles way out here because we want to be able to move the ball. So if I were just going to catch the ball, go ahead and toss me a ball really quick. Okay, so if I'm going to go catch it, I'm going to go straight to the ball, see where my fingertips are and then I'm going to toss it. So my fingertips are open to my target. If she tosses me a high ball, I'm now going to go up on top of the ball and then go through again. So I'm using my fingers to kind of think about where that ball is. So now my paddle, this is like my fingertips. So if I'm going under the ball, I'm going to catch it. If it goes up, I'm going to catch it. We don't need these big swings uh, that do that. The reason we do that is because if we're compressed like this and our paddles are here, we're trying to get out of the way of our own bodies. So with our position, if here's my 12 o'clock, what I'm doing is I'm creating the space away from my body so it's more comfortable for my paddle to move. So see how my left hand is here, my non-dominant hand? That is helping keep my shoulders even, okay? So if here's my 12 o'clock, my 11 to 1 on a clock, that's my strike zone. So I want my paddle to stay in this zone when I'm making contact. If I get it back here, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, that's behind me. So what that's going to do is it's going to pop the ball up. So the biggest question I get from players, uh, beginners, 3-0s, 3-5s, why do I keep popping the ball up? The reason we pop the ball up is because if I'm making contact behind my zone back here, that's going to lift the ball and create all sorts of crazy. Okay? So I'm going to show you a very simple thing to do to start working on this range of motion. Okay. Now, when you've got your partner, actually, um, what's really great to start with is just tossing the ball. 
So um, I've got this little circle right here. Um, it, what it does is I'm going to actually put both my feet in the circle. So if I'm actually in a match or playing a game, I don't want my feet this close together. But what I'm learning to do is reach and extend with my upper body and trying to keep my chest up. So this is just a great practice and drill. So when we're working on tossing the ball first, okay, I'm going to start with my hands out here. So I'm not in here, okay, because our elbows, they kind of work together. So I actually want my shoulders out. Uh, what I think about is like super inappropriate dinner behavior. I'm like spread out. This is my dinner plate, and I'm making a big old circle around that. Okay, so now I'm going to take my partner. Now here's the big key, okay. So when I separate, see how my hand stays here on the table? My dominant hand is going to go to my hips, and I'm going to toss it to my partner. So now when I finish, my hands are together. So when I catch it, I'm going to try to catch it with two hands, okay? Because as you're learning pickleball, uh, especially if you don't come from a racket sport, okay, especially a net sport like tennis or platform or something like that, we need to learn how to use both hands, okay? So if you're throwing a football, you use both hands. If you're throwing a baseball, both hands. If you're shooting a basketball, both hands. You're not just like doing all this crazy. So you wouldn't do that with a paddle either. So this is actually what we're working on. Okay, so I'm making that motion forward. I've got my feet in the circle. So I'm kind of really working on keeping my body out in front of me. So my head is up, okay, and I can adjust from that position, okay? So if I'm here and I'm super wide, it's going to kind of like stop my range of motion, right? Okay, now if I'm going to catch a ball, going to toss it, I'm not going to like want to back up to catch it like this. Okay, I want that to be up and out in front. So that's the, that's the most comparable thing that we're really talking about. So once we kind of get this motion, we're going to grab our paddles. Okay, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, again, put my feet in the circle. Okay, and um, one of the important things when you're doing this, I'm going to kind of push it to my partner. Um, a lot of players want to bounce the ball and then hit it, okay? Um, to develop good habits, take it in the air, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick my paddle out. See how my, my non-dominant is here? So I'm just going to kind of drop it and push it, okay? And I'm just going to try to keep my paddle in line forward, okay? And see how my non-dominant is kind of up here. So you got a couple of things that we can do. We can kind of keep it kind of close to your heart, okay? Or um, something you could do is take it and put it on your shoulder, and you could feel your shoulder moving, okay? So why we're doing this is because if I drop my non-dominant hand, that's a lot of my support, actually. So if my hand is down here, my other hand actually wants to be with it. So when making a ball go over a net, your hands kind of need to be out working together. Okay, so that's a really, really important factor here. Now when you're doing this, if the ball like goes over there, goes over there, let it go. You don't need to chase it. This is about kind of learning how to move your paddle comfortably and cooperatively. Okay, so you're really just trying to push. And something you can kind of do is create like a metronome. Okay, so we're going to go one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Four, one. So I missed it because I caught it a little bit too close down here. I really should have caught it out here. So that made the ball go into the net. Now, um, I always hear watch the ball. Okay? So keeping your head still is actually really, really important here. So if I would have dropped my head down, that would have made it worse. Okay? What it's really about is keeping it out in front. So um, I, I have something that's called your triangle. Now, what it is is it's your chin, it's your head, and it's both of your hands. They kind of work in unison together. So the head is the top of the triangle, and my hands are like the other three points. So if I do drop one point, the other points need to stay up because that allows them to come forward. Now, if I drop this part, then this part, this part goes down. So once you lose two points of that triangle, you are in trouble. So we're really just trying to keep our upper body up and allow this motion to happen. Now, um, notice that when I'm going from forehand to backhand, okay, a big part is this grip around your hands, okay? I'm not death gripping the paddle. I'm not like locking it. You almost want it like barely in your fingers, okay? You want it nice and soft and loose, okay? Uh, you don't want to feel any tension in your arm when you're holding your paddle. Okay, uh, a simple thing to do is uh, shake someone's hand. Okay, so I'm going to have my partner come in in the view so you can kind of see. I'm going to shake her hand. 
okay and I'm gonna take my thumb and my index finger and try to put that pressure right there okay that's what I want with my grip I'm not holding with these bottom fingers I'm holding with these top fingers okay that's what you want when you're holding your paddle you can put a lot of pressure with just those two fingers and that'll help you open or close the paddle and okay, what that also does is when I go to a backhand I just turn the paddle over okay here's my forehand here's my backhand and what's creating the motion is just this long push that we're trying to create okay so let's look at that one more time okay so nice and push one two three four one two three four okay so it's important to kind of keep in this tempo as you're going through this okay so it gets you in that practice. You're super, super loose. You're as relaxed as you can be. That's what keeps the ball soft, okay? So when we hit the ball hard, when we get tense and we get tight, that ball just accelerates. It pops. It does all sorts of crazy stuff. Our main job is we're trying to engage our shoulder, not our wrist and our elbows, okay? When we use our wrists and our elbows, okay, that makes us slap at the ball and pop at the ball. When you get more comfortable with this, what we learn to do is as I finish, now I go up here. So you're losing this kind of like range right here. From this shoulder hinge, I can go up, I can go out, I can go across. But what it's doing is I'm using my shoulders, okay? So I'm using this part of my body. I don't want to be like square and get stuck to the net because that gets me super locked up. We want to practice getting nice and loose and relaxed, okay? Uh, this will help control the depth of the ball, okay? So now what we're going to do is go a little farther back, okay? All right, so now we're going to go a, a little farther back, okay? Still kind of focused on a directional ball. Okay, and um, the thing to remember about this court, okay, so from this sideline to this center line, that's 10 feet of space, okay? So that 10 feet is all I really need to worry about. What happens a lot when people are learning is they get really concerned about their partner's space, okay? I need to learn how to cover my space first, okay? So what we're ideally looking for is the ability to go forward, okay? So when people get stuck in their mid-court position, just like up at the non-volley line, we tend to stop and we get super locked and wide. So when we do this, we end up going side to side with this motion, okay? So that makes the 10 feet 10 feet. That's big, okay? What I really want is if I see the ball going over here, I want to try to cut the ball off forward. So that's cutting down that 10 feet to maybe like seven feet or so. So it's not as far as we think. But what we're looking at is if I'm gonna go forward this direction, I'm going to take my foot and turn my toe this direction and move towards the ball. If it's gonna go this direction, I'm gonna turn my toe this direction and move towards the ball. So a lot of players want to turn sideways, okay? What we always want in pickleball is a forward motion. That's our goal. Okay, so we're going to do the same exercise where I'm going to try to get my feet right here in the ground. Okay, And uh, my partner and I are just going to try to keep this rally going. And as I'm finishing, okay, what I want is to finish above the net. Okay, So I'm keeping my paddle in front of me. Okay, So keeping my feet down forces me to keep my paddle out in front. Okay. So you can see I'm getting kind of loose with my knees. It's okay. I can kind of sit a little bit, and that will help me kind of lift the ball. Okay. It's a forward motion. So see how I'm not going, I'm not going up. Okay. I want to go forward. I want to kind of open my wrist towards the target. Okay. And I'm really just trying to keep everything extended. My chin is nice and high. Okay. So I can see the ball, but I can also see my partner. Uh, what I think about is if I had a cantaloupe right there, I got to hold that cantaloupe, and it's big. It's not an apple. It's a cantaloupe, okay? So I want to be able to see that out in front of me, okay? So now as we get comfortable with this, okay, I've got that nice long range. And the same thing, you can start with tossing the ball first, then getting into that longer motion, okay? So now what my partner is going to do is she is going to feed me a ball up here a little short, and what I'm going to practice is now stepping towards the ball and walking through it, okay? So let's try that out. So my paddle's first, and I'm going to walk through it, 
and then get up to that line, okay? So what we're practicing is keeping our paddle out in front of us, okay? That's the most important thing. So I'm not going back like this to the ball. I'm trying to say this is where I want it and I want to reach it. So let's try it again. So I'm going to walk and boom and boom. Okay, and we're going to do it again. Now open the paddle and forward. So it's very calm, okay, and it's really not that far. So this is hard stuff but it's worth it to practice, okay? Now we're gonna send the ball to the left side of my body. Now the first thing that we're gonna do is I'm gonna open my paddle towards the forehand and I'm just gonna walk this direction and still take a forehand, okay? So now see as I'm, as I'm getting here, I'm still trying to keep my feet like nice and light. Okay, I'm not trying to get compressed and heavy. I want to be loose as I can. So one of the things to remember in pickleball is a forehand is here and a backhand is here. Okay? Anything in front of your body. Okay? So kind of rule of thumb, anything below your waist, between your feet, those are forehand situations. And that's fine to do because guess what? Hitting a backhand is pretty hard. What happens a lot of times is people are bending with their elbow and they're pulling like this. Okay? So we're going to do a couple more where you just see that forehand. So I'm just going to adjust. She fed it to the wrong side. So now we're going to adjust this way. Okay, good. And we're just trying to keep our paddle up on that table as much as we can. Okay. Now I'm going to do it on the backhand. It's the same thing, though. I'm going to turn and just kind of walk through the ball. Okay. So I'm going to turn. That's out. So we let it go. We do not chase it. The biggest thing when you're learning this is trying to stay as calm as you can. Okay. We're going to have her do it again because I want her to feed me over here. There we go. A little tough. I really try to keep my head up. So when you're watching this, count how many steps I'm taking. Okay. It's not very many. So let's kind of count. Here we go. One, two, and then I'm at the line. It's a very short distance. Okay. So this little movement is key. It's practicing moving directly to the ball, directly to the ball, instead of going sideways from here to here, okay? So you're making this kind of a starting point. Now, as you kind of keep going, you just kind of keep going farther back and you keep working on this motion, okay? So you're always thinking if the ball is to your right, your first step is going to be towards your right. If the ball is to your left, your first step is going to be to your left. A lot of times when we have a tendency to play other racket sports, we end up doing something like this. That makes the ball make contact behind our bodies, okay? So what we're trying to really create is our paddle, we always want it in that like 11 to 1 zone. It's in front of our bodies. So as I'm moving to this, my paddle moves first, then I step to the ball. So I'm really trying to kind of use my outside knee to stay in a forward position, okay? This will create a lot more consistency moving forward, okay? So remember how important it is to try to relax the shoulders and relax the body. That creates more forward motion, okay? Once you get comfortable and better with this, then we learn to swing a little bit faster. The great thing about pickleball is our strokes are pretty much fundamentally the same. If I'm hitting a softer shot, okay, it's a slow motion towards my target, nice and long. If I'm hitting a faster shot, it's the same motion, faster. So we don't actually need to swing bigger to make the ball go harder and faster. It's a very short paddle, and remember, it's a plastic ball with holes in it. It's super sensitive. So we don't need as much as we think, okay? Everything is much more compact on the pickleball court. A rule of thumb is to think, I always want my paddle in front of me where I can see it, the ball is in front of me where I can see it, and the court is in front of me so I can move in a forward position.